today we're adding a standard to play some five color up a beanstalk Elish Norn Lich Knight's Conquest Reanimator combo. So here's our five color up a beanstalk Lich Knight Conquest Elish Norn Reanimator combo deck. I know the name. Pretty long, still trying to figure that one out. But the deck itself is pretty sweet, and we're built around a card that I've been wanting to build around ever since it was spoiled, which is Lich Knight's Conquest. So Lich Knight's Conquest, five mana, sack any number of artifacts, enchantments, and or tokens, and then reanimate that many things. So we've seen some reanimator decks in standard, but they're all kind of boring to me. They're like, I'm going to reanimate. Atroxa or a tally, which is super powerful, but we have a much more spicier plan. The upside of Lich Knight's Conquest is it can reanimate our entire graveyard at once. So we're trying to set up this lethal ETB combo kill of reanimation. So we're hoping to use Lich Knight's Conquest to reanimate Elish Norn to double our ETBs, along with Tyrant of Cure Ridges. This is our big finisher. When it ETBs, we get four damage. But if we have Elish Norn, it's doubled up to eight damage, which means if we have Elish Norn in two tyrants, it's 16 damage. Twin Shot Sniper ETBs 2 damage, so that doubles up to 4 with Elish Norn, which on top of 2 Tyrants adds up to 20, and that's lethal. And then we also have Charming Scoundrel, which is like so perfect for this deck. When ETBs, it can rummage to get a big finisher on the graveyard to reanimate. It can make a treasure that we can sacrifice to Lich Knight's Conquest to reanimate, or it can make a Wicked Roll. In one of the weird quirks of Wicked Rolls, that's the one that when it goes to the graveyard, you get 1 damage to your opponent. But one of the weird quirks of the rolls is you can only have 1 on a creature at a time, so we can actually use Charming Scoundrel like another burn spell. If we can reanimate like a couple of Charming Scoundrels with Elish Norn out, we can just stack all the wicked rolls on the same creature and they're going to like legend rule themselves away and each one that goes to the graveyard is going to deal a damage. So in theory, we just set up this Lich Knight's Conquest battlefield where we reanimate a whole bunch like four or five creatures at once and it should hopefully just kill our opponent on the spot from all these ETB triggers. As far as powering up Lich Knight's Conquest, we have some really spicy powerful stuff. So the key card is up a beanstalk. Up a beanstalk is ridiculous in this deck. And if you look at our reanimation targets, one of the upsides of them is they're all very castable. It's not like we're playing 10 drops or something that we're never going to cast, uh, but they're expensive enough that many of them trigger up a beanstalk. So we play up a beanstalk. We draw a card. We cast our Elish Norns, our Tyrants. We draw some extra cards. Our Lich Knight's Conquest draws extra cards. And then eventually we can just sack the up a beanstalk to Lich Knight's Conquest because it's an enchantment. Courier's Briefcase is actually kind of a two for one with Lich Knight's Conquest. It's an artifact, but it also makes a 1 1 token we can sacrifice. Collector's Vault, super perfect for this deck. Two to loot and make a treasure. So it fills our graveyard with our big reanimation targets. Also floods the board with treasure tokens that we could use to sack to Lich Knight's Conquest to reanimate all of our stuff. Otherwise, we get a bunch of removal. Leyline Binding triggers our up a beanstalk. Our mana base makes it one mana most of the time. Virtue of Persistence, removal that can also be reanimation later. Go for the throat to get rid of Shielded or whatever. Mana base. There's a huge pile of dual lands in this deck. So many that I'm not going to talk about all of that, but it's a bunch of triomes and Innistrad lands and pain lands and creature lands, some channel lands, some basic lands. In the sideboard, a bunch of sweepers and removal for aggro, duresses, some counters for control, and obstinate bailoth if we need to gain some life. And that is five color up a beanstalk, Lich Knight's Conquest, Elish Norn Reanimator combo. That's our deck for today. So let's jump into some games and see if we can pull off the spiciest, most spectacular reanimation combo kill in standard thanks for watching everyone i hope you enjoy the gameplay and i'll be back in a bit for the wrap up need some magic cards well you can snag them from our sponsor card kingdom over at cardkingdom.com slash mtg goldfish it is lich knight's conquest time we are playing some five color up a beanstalk lich knight's conquest reanimator it's a mouthful but i think the deck's pretty sweet we'll see we'll see hopefully it works <laughs> zeodor's proving grounds go opponent tap land well we will play a sulfurous springs and let's just get down up a beanstalk draw a card so one of the tricks is up a beanstalk is an enchantment that draws a card when it etbs so it's very good for sacking to uh to Lich Knight's Conquest. It like does its job, maybe draws us some extra cards, and then, uh, yeah, let's just Courier's Briefcase. And then eventually lets us uh, reanimate a bunch of stuff, which is pretty sweet. What do you got, Schwamp? Who gonna take down? Well, this kind of works out, because now we can Charming Scoundrel kill Liliana. Charming Scoundrel, make a treasure, play the land, snipe Liliana. 
The other thing I really like about this deck is I love Elish Norn, but Elish Norn's pretty matchup dependent. We have like the combo reanimation kill though, which makes it so much better. Like even when it's bad, it's good in this deck. All right, Mosswood Dread Knight. Do we Leyline Binding it? Probably. Yeah, let's Leyline Binding, draw a card. Get rid of the Dread Knight, untap. Yeah, let's just, let's just spend our treasure to play Alish Norn, draw a card. Wow. Okay. Apparently, mom. OP. A lot of people are playing this like Golgari deck, and it might be that we just kind of outvalue them. <laughs> That's what it felt like that game, at least, is like we kind of just like do all this valuey stuff, and our opponent has a hard time keeping up. Uh, let's do a little, a little trimming, a little trimming. I think we even go down one mom, maybe one Lich Knight's Conquest. Run it like that. This deck is super fun. Abba Bleen's talk is uh, quite a drug. <laughs> it's a heck of a drug. Seriously, though, like, the amount of cards you draw is so sweet. And then if you get extra synergy on top of that, oh my goodness, that card's sweet. Ooh, okay, I like this hand. We have our other big payoff in Collector's Vault. It would be nice if we could uh, get some creatures in our graveyard eventually, but, I mean, our opponent's going to be trying to kill our creatures anyway, so. Uh, Zeotor's proving around. Yo, opponent. And Mosswood Red Knight draw a card. Well, play land, and I think we just get down this Collector's Vault. See if we can start uh, looting our way into some treasure. Uh, opponent. All right, does have a green source. There's a Dread Knight. Sure. Play the land. Pass and loot. We do want to make sure that she old red doesn't stick. That's a that's an issue because we do like drawing cards. Um, one two. Collector's Vault, loot, make a treasure. Discard a Lich Knight's Conquest for now. Little little early for the Lich Knight. Uh, let's Courier's Briefcase. We're gonna besage you the Collector's Vault. All right, we'll cash in our treasure to loot. Wow, are we discarding another Lich Knight's Conquest? I think we are. That feels bad, but I think it's worth it. So opponent's gonna blow up the Collector's Vault. We will grab a Triome that makes blue mana. Spar's Headquarters, I think? And then play the Proving Ground. Well, I think our next plan is to sack this Courier's Briefcase to draw three cards. Riveteer's Outlook. I mean, we have a lot of removal in hand, so I don't think we're gonna die anytime soon. Even if our opponent does have, like, Nissa or Shieldred or something, we have the answer. All right, another Dread Knight. Sure, sure, sure. At some point, we can just farewell away the board. Down to 14. Well, we untap. Play the Sulphur Springs, and we're just gonna, we're just gonna pass. We're gonna pass Courier's Briefcase and maybe Leyline's Binding. Lord Skidda. All right. Our new plan might be pass. I think we just pass and farewell. Pona eats a Lich Knight's Conquest. Well, we might as well chump. It only saves one point of damage, but we're definitely on the farewell plan here. Pona eats us to nine. Well, let's Courier's Briefcase. Draw some cards. Oh, we did not hit a land. That's kind of awkward. All right, there's a land. So play the land. Farewell. Exile all creatures. Wow. All right, that's fine. <laughs> Opponent's on the kill my own Dread Knight so I can uh, get it back plan. I guess we could have exiled graveyards there because we don't really have anything meaningful in our graveyard, but that's fine. Opponent, land, Dread Knight cycles. I mean, we're just gonna let this go for now. We're not gonna, we're not gonna spend our resources on a Dread Knight. We will spend our resources on Phyrexian Arena though. Gets down the Dread Knight. Let's Courier's Briefcase and Collector's Vault pass the turn. We're probably gonna end up Leyline Binding this Dread Knight, as awkward as that is. Opponent land. Cemetery Prowler. Opponent does have a lot of graveyard hate. I will give them credit for that. They did come prepared for the graveyard. And Amirix. Well, let's get rid of this Mosswood Dread Knight. Loot with the Collector's Vault. Discard a Sunfall at this point, I think. A bonus passes. Well, a uh, Tyrant. Kill your Prowler. That's one of the things I like about this deck, is even though our like big game plan is reanimation, 
we can actually play most of our spells. It's not like we're locked into these huge, like, 7, 8, 9 drops. We can actually just hard cast Tyranicare Ridges or whatever. I mean, we get to draw another 3 with Courier's Briefcase, and we have 3 removal spells in hand, so not about to die anytime soon. I think we're good. Like, I imagine we just end up winning this game. No reanimation, but that's that's fine. Collector's Vault doing its, doing its thing. No Beanstalk, even. And we're still, like, crushing our opponent. Wow. Is this the, the salty Golgari rope? <laughs> I feel like Collector's Vault's legit underrated. I think it's just like a good card. It's essentially one to loot because you get the treasure, but you can also store up the treasure. Is this a salty? We're not even playing like a Trox or a Tally or any of like the <laughs> the salty cards that people don't like. We're playing we're playing Tyrant of Carriages. How do you get salty about Tyrant of Carriages? It's always funny to me when people are playing just like one of the one of the top meta decks and then get salty against a brew i guess kind of make me some people don't like losing to brews they would rather they would rather play the decks that they know well we didn't make lich knight's conquest look impressive this game but we did make our deck look impressive i don't even know if they're there anymore they might have just shut off their arena opponent passes i guess keep playing magic if our opponents if our opponent's actually just salting out we're, we're gonna keep doing our thing until their head explodes we draw so many cards and we get to play Elish Norn. I love this deck. It's not like we're gonna make a treasure and then draw three more cards and Leyline binding all your stuff. You're you're good. You're good. You can get there, Mike. I mean, opponent did get us down to nine. And push. all right, that went pretty well. That went pretty well. So much value. It is five color up a beanstalk. Lich Knight's conquest. <laughs> reanimator time the longest deck name in the history of wilds of eldraid standard but totally worth it no idea how to fit that in a youtube title but that's tomorrow's problem today's problem is uh generating as much value as possible with uh this motley crew of magic mono green <gasps> mono green ramp oh god we might be in trouble we might be in trouble. Another Lich Knight's Conquest. Well, uh, boom. Lanamore Waste. Charming Prince. Treasure Me. Or Charming Scoundrel, rather. Treasure Me, Charming Scoundrel. Abonant. Gains a little life. Back up to 22. Land. And... Oh. Streetwise. Okay. Wait, are they... Is this Mono Green Butts? Are they butt fighting us? Uh, alright. Courier's Briefcase. Uh, Rofine's Tower. At some point, we need to draw some removal. This creature assigns damage equal to its toughness rather than its power. Yeah, we have drawn like zero removal this game. Opponent gets and hits us. No blocks. Come on, no, no big whammies. Oh, the biggest whammy. Oh, God. Oh, dear. Well, okay, we found a ley line binding. I'm still not sure this is fast enough. So we can ley line binding the Nissa. Play Restless Fortress. I mean, maybe we're okay. Next turn, we can play Tyrant and kill. If our opponent doesn't have another big... Ugh, okay, Ren and Round Breaker. That's not as big. If our opponent doesn't have another big follow-up, we might be okay. They're going to turn on a land. Ugh, all right, we're going to chump. Yeah, this is scary. We're getting ugh, so many Lich Knight's Conquests. Nothing to reanimate, though. All right, let's play Tyrant. Kill the 4-4. All right, Tyrant, you're going to have to hold. You're going to have to hold. The problem is our opponent's like one big draw away from just winning. All right, you're going to take down. Whiff, whiff, whiff. All right, they get another uh, Streetwise Negotiator. Well, they're going to land. Okay, oh, does that mean they drew Nissa? Oh, God. If they drew Nissa, we're... Oh, all right, all right, all right, yeah. <laughs> well, those were some mighty good draws, opponent. Mighty, mighty fine. Uh, farewell in. Sunfall in. I guess disdainful stroke, since our opponent's Nisa ing. Um, go down a sniper. Go one up a beanstalk. Go one charming scoundrel. Go one Elish Norn. Yeah, one Lich Knight's Conquest, right like that. Sometimes your opponent plays two Nissas and you die. Nissa, I think, is actually kind of a sleeper in standard. Card's very strong. The problem is you gotta play Mono Green, and Mono Green sucks. That is keeping Nissa's power in check. But I'm telling you, there will be a time, especially with three-year standard now, where Nissa's gonna be legal for roughly ever. There will be a time where Nissa's in a top-tier deck. You can, you can write it down. <laughs> Plus, I mean, the upside of three years standard is if it doesn't work out, who's going to remember that I said this three years from now? That's infinity. But I really do think this is a card that like has the power level to be the driver of a top tier deck in standard. It's just like in the worst color and it pretty much uh, forces you to be very close to mono that color 
which is uh that's a tough a tough road to hoe i think for uh even a planeswalker as strong as nisa well all right we're on the play this time let's see if we can mulligan oh boy if we had green man i'd love this hand but we don't all right this will keep you know what let's put sunfall to the bottom we might end up regretting that but so we can kill the first so we can draw a card with up a beanstalk we can kill the first thing crystal grotto i don't know about that nothing is a deck that's a little haywire might sure well, in that case, I think we have to just kill the Haywire Mite, because if we don't, it can just blow up our Beanstalk anyway. Up on it. This Disdainful Stroke is nice. Disdainful Stroke means we can actually stop a Nissa at some point. Opponent is all about this butt fighting thing. Is this actually a good card? Uh, let's up a Beanstalk, draw a card. Spara's Headquarters, go. Up on it, land, and Kodama. All right, opponent gets to Kadama, and they get to ramp. Wait, is green is green good now? Is that a thing? Oh, play the land. I think we just have to pass. We have to pass, kill the Kadama, leave up Disdainful Stroke for some bomb like Nissa. Opponent goes to combat. Opponent attacks. Well, get rid of the Kadama. Opponent hits us to 16. We would love to counter Nissa. Azusa's many journey, sure. That doesn't do anything right away. Well, play a Collector's Vault. Pass the turn. Miss a land drop, unfortunately. Down to 13. Okay. I mean, I think we have to let this go, unfortunately. We're kind of in a sketchy spot here. Well, let's Collector's Vault. Loot. Discard a second Collector's Vault. No, no, no. We don't want to be taking damage off that. This is actually a bad spot. Yeah, I mean, I think we Collector's Vault. Rafine's Tower, play a Jetmere's Garden past the turn. Opponent, Azusa's Many Journeys. We're losing to Streetwise Negotiator. That's actually a thing that's happening here. Attacks. Mills, hits a land. I mean, next turn we do get to play Elish Norn and Scry. Oh, well, they Scry to the top. Okay. A Wrath would be nice. Kind of regretting putting that Sunfall to the bottom. Awaken the Woods. X a million. Well, yeah. I mean, we got to counter that or we lose. We get to untap. Play Elish Norn. Draw a card. Play Restless Fortress. And, I mean, this is what we got. We got to hope this last card is not doing anything big. Although our opponent left it on the top of their deck, which is a bad, bad sign. <sighs> Nissa. All right, all right, we'll keep this. This is okay. This is okay. We have double Lich Knight's Conquest. Right now, all we have is a Twin Blade Sniper to reanimate. Hopefully we get some, uh, some more to go with it. Well, let's lead on a Death Cap Glade go. Island and up a Beanstalk. We have those. Well, let's Sulphur Springs Courier's Briefcase. Opponent, tap land, and passes. Play as Eator's Proving Grounds. I don't really want to besage you the upper beanstalk and give our opponent a land, but it might come to that eventually. All right, opponent passes. We draw a Tyrant of Carriages. Play the land, go to combat. What are the chances they have a counter? I think we actually just slam Elishnorn here. Elishnorn's actually really good against these ramp decks usually. Yeah, opponent, you're gonna learn it. Well, they get to draw a card, but uh, <laughs> it is not going to exile anything because Mom is really good against their deck. They do have sweepers, and it doesn't stop up a beanstalk because that's a cast trigger, but, but this does shut down a lot of their ramp and a lot of their removal. Ooh, Collector's Vault, that we like. Let's play Collector's Vault. Loot with Collector's Vault. Discard the Tyrant. Play a Restless Cottage. Go attacking. About it. Down to 13. So can we win next turn? We channel Twin Shot Sniper. I think the answer is yes. If our Elish Norn sticks and we don't get countered. All right, opponent passes. Play Sundown Pass. Two. Collector's Vault. I mean, we're gonna go for it. Discard Twin Shot Sniper. Lich Knight's Conquest. Let's see if they got a counter. 
sack you, sack you. And uh, mom on the battlefield, that is 12 at the face. <laughs> and that is the plan. That is the plan coming to fruition. And uh, yeah, that's that's the combo kill. That is the janky combo kill. How do we stop our opponent from ramping us to death? Farewell in. Disdainful stroke, negate it. Go down. Our hero from last game, Twin Shot Sniper, I think we mostly want to try to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with our opponent. That is the that is our game plan. We're going to try to just go even bigger than they do, draw more cards than they do, reanimate more than they do. I think that's our, our best bet. Counters seem very good. We'll trim some of the random two drops. We'll do the classic, let's play three of each plan. Duress also seems good. How do we get in one more duress? I don't really want to cut the upper bean stocks. You know what? We'll go down one more courier's briefcase. Let's try it like that. Mostly we hope to stick that Elish. Elish Norn's like actually very brutal against our opponent's deck. Although it's probably going to get better after sideboarding for our opponent. I imagine they have more answers. Aw. Oh, this, these are the kind of hands that make YouTube yell at me. But the math. We have 24 lands in our deck. There's 53 cards. There's 24 lands. We get two draws to find one. We need one. 70%? Okay, keep. <laughs> oh, come on, math. One time, math. One time. Okay, that's not a land. Oh, no. Oh, no. Math. Oh, we are getting betrayed by math. 70%. 70%. I, I showed you the numbers. Oh, don't yell too hard. I showed you the math. The math, the math backs it up. Ugh. Top Eerie Stamper. Now we're at the, like, Draw land now or math. Oh, who would have thought that one land one keep would fail us? There's the tap. I mean, I think we're just. I don't think we can get back in this game. We have two lands and our opponent has six. I don't think there's any any coming back from this start. This hand had so much value though. Archangel of Wrath. We only really needed one land to get to like all these two drops that draws cards. Opponent burns us. Burns us. Up a beanstalk and draw a card. And a land of more waste. And if our opponent has a land, we're dead because these top eerie stompers turn on and we take. All right. Yep, yep, yep. I feel like we were betrayed by math. I feel like that keep mathematically 70% of the time. Unfortunately, we were in the 30%. And then we even low rolled harder because we missed like about three turns in a row. Why does math hate us? Why does math hate us? All right, this will this will keep. We have two lands this time, which is better. We have our up a beanstalk. We got the collector's vault. Well, play land, up a beanstalk, draw a card. All right, it's a tap land, but it's still a land. Abone it, forest, and they have an up the beanstalk. Guess what, opponent? We have even more up a beanstalks. <laughs> up a beanstalk, draw another card. So we can go untap land duress. I think we just play the tap land though. Play the tap land. Next turn we can like collector vault, loot with collector vault. So play the land, play a collector vault. Do we loot and duress is the question. Let's loot. Opponent has a ley line binding to draw a card. Going to hit our collector's vault. We'll discard a Tyrant of Carriages for now. I think we actually just pass. Elish Norn double up a Beanstalk is so much value. Opponent, Forest, Top Yuri Stomper. Let's see if they can kill Elish Norn. In our dream world, we hit an untapped land so we can also duress. Ah, uh, there's the untapped land. Okay, so, Lanowar Waste, Elish Norn, draw two. duress you to make sure you can't kill our Elish Norn. Uh, well, we're definitely taking the Sunfall. The rest of our opponent's cards don't really do anything with the Elish Norn out. So now our opponent needs to find an answer for this Elish Norn. Duress, gonna take, well, eh, probably the go for the throat, actually. We already have so many up a bean stocks. We would love to draw an untapped red source. Not very likely, but it's possible. Archangel Arath runs it out, passes. Well, up a bean stock, draw a card. Oh, that's actually very, very good. Play Spara's Headquarters and pass the turn. If we attack and they double block, we can get them really good with Leyline Binding, like incredibly good. I think we do. Us is just too juicy to pass up. Or our opponent just takes it. 
I kind of like where we're at now. We have three Upper Beanstalks and an Elish Norn. We can play Tyrant next turn and draw three. We have <laughs> Leyline Binding to draw infinite. Sure, we will take it. Well, we're gonna cast a Leyline Binding. Triple up a Beanstalk. <laughs> Opponent's gonna sack to draw some cards. Sure, sure, sure. Oh, this is so brutal. Oh my goodness, up a Beanstalk. We will get rid of Leyline Binding and also up a Beanstalk. Get back our Treasure Vault. Loot with Treasure Vault. Discard a Zeotaurus Proving Ground. Untap. I'm going to do a little chumping. Play a Courier's Briefcase. Double it up. Play a Jetmere's Garden. And uh, pass the turn. As long as we can protect the mom, we should be good. We're just like completely outvaluing our opponent here. Opponent, herd migration. Yep, we don't even actually care about that. I'm gonna go attacking. Well, that's Leyline Binding. Draw a few cards. There's a Lich Knight's Conquest. Get the Angel, get the token. Collector's Vault, loot. Discard the Tyrant. Untap. Two tyrants in the graveyard, so that's what? 816? Well, that's Leyline Binding. Draw a few cards. I think we get to. Okay, there's the tyrant. That's what we were looking for. That's what we were looking for. Now we get the full on combo kill, which is going to be sweet. Uh, Treasure Vault. Loot. Discard Tyrant of Cure Ridges. Uh, Collector's Vault. Loot. Discard the Charming Scoundrel. Death Clap Glade. One, two. Oh, this is so big. Oh, this is the combo kill we've been waiting for. One, two, three, four, five. Lich Knight's Conquest. Up a Beanstalk. Gonna draw some cards. Sure, whatever. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Six, we'll just sack everything. I don't even know how many creatures we have, but uh, get them all back. They're all gonna double trigger because of Elish Norn. That is 24 plus damage at our opponent's face. <laughs> yes, that is that is exactly what we want to do with this deck. Oh, deck so sweet. And one of the tricks of this deck is if we keep stacking the wicked rolls on the the same creature, they also end up burning our opponent. <laughs> Oh, that was sweet. I mean, our opponent's playing the big mana over the top deck and uh, Alice Norn Tyrant of Carriage is up a Beanstalk. Like, oh boy, up a Beanstalk is an absolutely wild card. Well, we went toe to toe with the biggest, baddest ramp deck in the format and uh, we pretty much said we got more value than you do. <laughs> sweet, sweet. It is five color up a Beanstalk, Elish Norn, Mother of Machines, Lich Knight's Conquest, Reanimator Time, something like that. <laughs> Sounds fine. We don't have many land types for this Leyline's Binding, but we got our Collector's Vault, which is sweet. Let's just bivouac, go. Twin Shot Sniper can be sneaky good in some matchups. Bant A. Our opponent's probably also going up a Beanstalk. Oh, five color, all right. Well, hmm. Do we just up a Beanstalk or do we Collector's Vault? Uh, I think we actually Collector's Vault. We play Collector's Vault. This opens up the possibility of looting and playing up a Beanstalk next turn if we want to. Got a lot of land types. All right, they're going to ley line binding the collector's vault. Sure. Well, let's up a beanstalk to draw a card. Well, I think we're gonna play the jet mirrors gardens. We kind of want the land types for this uh, ley line binding. Hunted Ridge. Bramble familiar. Oh. All right. So opponent might be the cascade deck actually. Are we just gonna let them untap with a million up of beanstalks? Like, what's the worst thing they do? Is they combo off with Cascade? Do we need to leave up Leyline Binding, I guess, is the question. <sighs> All right, we're gonna be a little greedy here. We're going to play an up a beanstalk, draw a card. We could hit a Triome and still Leyline Binding. We do not. So play Shattered Sanctum. Channel away a Bramble Familiar. All right, don't kill us. Opponent, land. Invasion of Alara. All right, well, let's see how bad it is. Opponent, gonna find a Bramble Familiar. 
and let's see what they spin into. Was it just a, okay. Just a Phyrexian Flesh Gorger. In theory, we can beat a Phyrexian Flesh Gorger, I think. How do we do this? We don't want them flipping this invasion of Alara. All right, let's Leyline Binding. Draw two. The invasion of Alara. Play a tap land. Oh, we've done such a bad job of finding triomes to power up this ley line binding. We might have got too greedy by not just leaving up interaction that turn and instead instead trying to play things. We were hoping to hit a triome, but we just couldn't find one. Bramble familiar, yeah. Opponent passes. This is actually a very tricky spot to be in because of this flesh gorger. So we can like ley line binding the flesh gorger, but then we die. That's not ideal. We do get to draw two cards, so we could hit something. We play Elish Norn, but then we die. I guess we can Leyline Binding a Bramble Familiar to not die? That doesn't feel good, though. Well, let's cast Leyline Binding, see what we find. We get to draw two. Charming Scoundrel, Virtue. Okay, so we'll get rid of the Flesh Gorger. Take seven, ouch. Play a Charming Scoundrel. Make a treasure, play a Sulphurous Springs, Virtue away a Bramble Familiar. Okay, we're not dead. We're not fully dead. We're still in a very fragile, scary spot. They have one more Bramble Familiar left, I believe. Oh no, they don't. Oh, that's good news. Oh, we're gonna block. I think they're out of Bramble Familiars. Leyline Binding to get back the Flesh Gorger. A Bramble Familiar. Well, play the land. Play Elish Norn. Draw a couple cards. Play a Courier's Briefcase. Make a couple tokens. Pass the turn. See if we survive. Oh, on it land. So, so close. Okay, Cemetery Desecrator, that doesn't do anything, though, because of Elish Norn. Oh, we might be good. Oh, we might be good. We could really use a Ley Line Binding. That would be spectacular. Uh, we will block, and we will block. So, one. This might work. One, two, three, four, five. Wow, this is gonna be interesting. So we can Lich Knight's Conquest. We draw two cards from up a beanstalk. We sack Courier's Briefcase, we sack up a beanstalk. Charming Scoundrel makes a treasure. Twin Shot Sniper kills a Bramble Familiar. Make a treasure, kill the other Bramble Familiar. Courier's Briefcase to make some tokens. Spara's headquarter. I mean, we've made a bunch of blockers. Block, block, block. Oh, we really don't want to lose Elish Norn. Block, block. I mean, we have more Lich Knight's Conquest, so our stuff dying isn't the end of the world here. So we stay at six. Opponent's gonna pass. Oh, we just can't kill this Flesh Gorger. The Flesh Gorger is so obnoxious. All right, Lich Knight's Conquest. Sack the two treasures. Get back our friends. Make a treasure. Shoot the desecrator. Make a treasure. Oh, do we actually want to kill the desecrator? Maybe we got to leave it alive. That's so awkward. Because it can exile something that costs what? Seven. So it can kill Elish Norn? That would be bad. Yeah, we're going to leave it alive. That does mean we spent a little bit of damage for no reason, but... Treasure. And then we will play a Sundown Pass, Tyrant of Cure Ridges. Draw a card. Oh, Leyline Binding, but we're a mana short now. Oh, Leyline Binding is what we want. Snipe your face. You know, we're just going to pass. We're going to pass. If we can survive one more turn to get to this Leyline Binding, then I think we're good. Block, block. So stuff dies, but we finally get rid of this Flesh Gorger. Our opponent can kill the Elish Norn. Hopefully that's okay. Oh my God, a tally. Okay, that's frightening. Up a Beanstalk. Wow, those were hits. And an invasion of Falara. I don't think our opponent can cascade into anything though. 
I'm pretty sure all their Bramble familiars are gone, right? I think. Okay, nothing to cascade into. So I think we might still be okay here somehow, as crazy as that sounds. Because we get to play an Elish Norn. Draw a card. We can't win this turn, right? I don't think so. Oh no, especially with our dragon exiled. So play up a beanstalk. Draw two cards. Leyline binding. Draw two cards. Hit the leyline binding. The up a beanstalk. Get back our other leyline binding. Hit the leyline binding and a tally. Now we'll pass the turn. Oh, that was a good turn. That was a very good turn. All right, opponent. All right, opponent. Somehow we have survived all the cascading, all the bramble familiars down. All right, there's the herd migration. That is a lot of bodies. Leyline binding, that's not gonna work though. We gotta be able to survive this, right? We have to. All we have is a charming scoundrel in a twin shot sniper in the graveyard. One, two, three, four, five. Lich Knight's Conquest. Draw two cards. Sack a Leyline Binding and a Courier's Briefcase. Get back Charming Scoundrel Twin Shot Sniper. Make a treasure. Snipe a beast. Wow! And a bonus scooped it up! A bonus scooped it up! <laughs> okay. Maybe this deck's actually sweet. Wow! We're playing against the biggest value decks in standard. The ones that go the most over the top of everything else. And we're going over the top of them, which is actually like super impressive. How do we stop this deck though? So the counters are good. We can do a bit of, a bit of trimming. I mean, basically we need to keep our opponent from, from flipping the invasion of Alara. Yeah, let's bring in the farewell as a last gasp attempt to uh, stay alive. Let's try it like that. Basically we're open to counter the, <laughs> The invasion of Alara. If we encounter that, we're good. That's that's basically it. We have the disdainful strokes. We can make a treasure with the charming scoundrel to cast them. So I think we're we're okay. We're okay. Not the most exciting hand. We don't have any of our early game. Well, there's a collector vault. All right, hand getting more exciting now that we have collector's vault to uh, do some filtering. Uh, opponent tap land. So I think we actually just play collector's vault here. We're not gonna be disdainful stroking this turn anyway. Passes, there's Elish Norn. So we will play the land. Opponent's gonna lay line binding. So we will loot. Opponent's gonna eat our vault. Yup. That's fine, we'll, we'll find an answer for this eventually. Opponent passes. Well, let's charming scoundrel. Make a treasure. I mean, as long as we make sure they never in resolve Invasion of Alara, it should be hard for us to lose. Well, there's a land, so play the land. So we could play the Elish Norn. I think we just pass. We could play the Elish Norn, but if we needed blue mana, we'd have to sack both treasures and we don't have a blue source for the future. Until we find a blue source, I think valuing these treasures highly makes sense. I'll go to combat, hit you with a Charming Scoundrel, play a Collector's Vault. Collector's Vault's nice, that's gonna make more blue mana. Pass the turn. Well, now we're hoping to find creatures to actually close out the game. Bramble familiar, sure. Passing, well, that's Collector's Vault. Do some looting. Discard Elish Norn number one. Untap. Restless Fortress. Kill the Bramble familiar. Pass. I mean, since we have two Disdainful Strokes, we're just going to play this conservatively. We've played the Cascade deck, and we know... It has a tough time against counters, so since we have counters, we're gonna really value leaving them up. We might actually just discard this Elish Norn even. We have the Lich Knight's Conquest, so we're gonna get them all back again eventually. Actually, you know what? We don't really need this land. Let's discard the land, untap. Up a Beanstalk's nice. Go to combat, get in, hit ya. Let's just up a Beanstalk, draw a card. 
play a Jet Mirrors Garden. Yeah, I mean, we're gonna we're gonna stick to the plan. We're gonna stick to the super slow conservative plan. Like we're only getting in for one a turn, but until they make us spend our disdainful strokes, I don't know how we lose if we play it this way. Phyrexian Flesh Gorger is a 3-3, three, three. sure. Well, let's keep collectors vaulting. Discard Proving Grounds. Untap. Well, now I think we actually play the Elish Norn. We have so many treasures that we can still cast all of our counters. Draw a card. Whew, another Lich Knight's Conquest. We actually kind of want this scoundrel to die so we can reanimate it. Right now, the only creature we have to reanimate is the, the Elish Norn. Opponent, tap land. I mean, opponent can't do much, sure. They can't do much until they get rid of the Elish Norn. Like, it, Elish Norn is also very good against our opponent. Well, Collector's Vault. Loot. Discard a land. Untap. Well, let's lay line binding. Draw a card. Get rid of that. Get rid of the Desecrator. All right, opponent kills the Charming Scoundrel, which is fine. We actually kind of wanted them to do that. Yeah, let's Collector's Vault. Discard the Proving Ground. Play Rafine's Tower. Pass the turn. Oh, we just need like a creature. That's all we're missing is a a creature to reanimate. We're getting so many treasures we can like Lich Knight's Conquest multiple times if we want to in the same turn. So we're in we're in really good shape. Opponent. We don't especially care about that. I don't think we're gonna die to them just hard casting their cascade shenanigan stuff. And we got the up a beanstalk. Like sooner or later we're gonna hit we're gonna hit something. Are we attacking? Yeah, opponent can get in. It has menace. Gets and hits us. Well, that's Collector's Vault. Discard a, I guess a Lich Knight's Conquest for now, actually. Untap. Well, okay, this might, this might seal the deal. The seal deal. Draw a card. Leyline Binding times two. Get rid of the Crab. Yes, we'll pay the three. Get rid of the Flash Gorger. Yes, we'll pay the three life. All right, so Threats down. Hit you with the Elish Norn. And, well, that's Collector's Vault loot. Collector's Vault has made a lot of treasures. Up a Beanstalk, draw a card. Or two cards, technically. Bivouac, go. I mean, we're doing fine. We're just not drawing the creatures. <laughs> About it. Go for the throw with the Elishnorn, sure. If our opponent could see our hand, I think they would probably scoop. If they can blow up this Cami War. Okay, that's... That's worth countering. That's a that's a little too little too much. A little too much opponent. Settle down over there. Yeah, let's just untap. Up a beanstalk. Alright, let's let's collect your vault. See if we can find a creature. Alright, Charming Scoundrel is technically a creature. Treasure Vault. Land is not a creature. We'll discard I guess actually the up a beans. Yeah, we'll discard the up a beanstalk. Play the land. Lich Knight's Conquest. Draw a couple cards. Sack a couple treasures. Oh no! Oh, we could have sacked one more. I'm an idiot. We have two charming scoundrels. All right, make a treasure, make a treasure. Oops. For some reason, I didn't realize we had that other charming scoundrel in there. I mean, honestly, I don't think it actually matters, but we could have got a little more value. Are we going to mill out? That might be the new question. We've actually just played. We're down to 23 cards, and up a beanstalk is not a May ability. It is a must. Opponent it, land. Mirror shell grab, sure. An opponent scoops it up, and uh, I mean, that is Lich Knight's Conquest. Why is no one playing Lich Knight's Conquest? Why does no one play this? It's such a fun deck. Like, it's so much value, and you get to do everything. You get to do all the cool things at once, which, uh, yeah, pretty sweet. Sweet, sweet. We're doing all the things. We're doing all the cool things at once. That's our plan for today. Obscura Storm. All right. So, opponent, probably mono. Well, not mono white. It's never mono white anymore, but mostly white control probably it looks like a words of probably oh all right oh angel oh god okay uh well i was not expecting angels we might actually be in a bit of trouble now if our opponent just curves out with angels yeah god is kind of busted bonus gets and hits us down to 18 and sarah paragon yeah 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 how bad is it to wait a turn like we can answer something here we could up a beanstalk try to draw land 
We could Charming Scoundrel make a treasure, sack the treasure, Leyline Binding. Do we have to answer the Yada? We don't really have Rass in the main deck. Yeah, I think we just have to Leyline Binding. I think we just gotta snag the Sarah Paragon and, and hope for the best. Gonna need to draw more Leyline Bindings, I think. Opponent, again, Joe, gets in with Yada, uh-huh, uh and uh, Boonbringer Valkyrie. How about another Leyline Binding? Up a Beanstalk, well, let's up a Beanstalk draw a card. Hopefully an untapped land? Okay, Beseju, up a Beanstalk, draw a card. I don't know if we can survive this, though. I feel like this matchup should get better after we can uh, sideboard opponent. Invasion of Gabicon. After we can sideboard and bring in Rass, it's gonna get easier. For now, we're pretty much just hoping to draw Leyline Bindings. I guess we could also just win, but that seems hard. Opponent, gonna flip the Gabicon. Yeah, things keep getting worse. Yeah, 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 yeah. Flips the Gabicon, even more counters. I think we're like dead next turn. Oh, what a... What an angel star. I mean, Giada's a busted card. If you untap with Giada, you're probably gonna win the game. And our opponent untapped with Giada, and uh, they're gonna win the game. All right, gotta kill the Giada, and we couldn't do it. Unfortunately, well, actually, no. All right, so we get to bring in four sweepers, two lithomantic barrages, go down, a couple of charming scoundrels, a courier's briefcase, a collector's vault, one Elish Norn, one Lich Knight's Conquest. Let's try something like that. We just want all the removal. Like, basically, if we can kill our opponent's stuff, we'll be fine. Like, that same draw without Giada, and I think we're fine, but our opponent just got to snowball the Giada, and if you get to snowball the Giada, you're probably gonna win. It adds so much power to the battlefield. We're gonna keep this because we can kill the Giada. Opponent does not have a Giada, so they're gonna mulligan aggressively to try to find the Giada. They might be disappointed. Twin Shot Sniper is a pretty clean, pretty clean answer here. Opponent, Obscura Storefront. This hand I think seems good against Angels. We get down to Up a Beanstalk. We are gonna need white mana eventually, but play the land, Up a Beanstalk. Draw a card. I'm just excited that we're not gonna lose to Giada. That's the that's the main excitement here. Opponent doesn't even have Giada. Yeah, let's just Charming Scoundrel, make a treasure. If our opponent wants to counter it, that's fine. All right, opponent's going to counter. Will plays Andrew's Lounge. I mean, we do still need to find a white source. That's the biggest thing we're missing here. Planes for our opponent. Play the land, up a Beanstalk. Draw a card. Ooh, all right, it's slow white mana, but it's white mana. Pass the turn. Passes. Now, Spara's headquarters, go. Opponent. Errant in, all right, even more Giatas, that's fine. That's fine, I mean, we have a handful of answers, and our answers are gonna start drawing us cards, which is nice. Passes. Now, play the land. Virtue, Errant and Giata. All right, ley line binding. Draw two. Aaron and Giada. So we lose our virtue, but virtue's not not necessary. I mean, with two up of beanstalks, we're gonna draw a lot of cards. Opponent, Sarah Paragon, sure. And a land drop. Well, let's, do we cycle this? Yeah, let's cycle. We're gonna hit our land drops here with two up a beanstalks. Three up a beanstalks, well, up a beanstalk, draw a card. Leyline binding, draw three cards. <laughs> up a beanstalk is way wilder than I gave it credit for. That card is so strong. Uh, play a land, collector's ball, like, Three up of Beanstalks is ridiculous. Just like everything we play is busted now. Passing. Well, let's do some collector vaulting. Twin shot sniper. We're gonna start setting up for our reanimation plan here. Go for the throat. Loot with collector's vault. Discard a shattered sanctum. Play restless fortress and pass the turn. Um, so this can do what? Nothing? All right, sure. I don't even know if we care about the Sarah Paragon at the moment with nothing in the graveyard. Opponent, combat. We will take it down to 14. Well, cycle the Jetmere's Garden. 
basically looking for our creatures. That's what we really want. Uh, untap. <laughs> well, let's collector's briefcase. Play a bivouac and pass the turn. I don't know if there's any way we can lose this game, honestly. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's go for the throat that. And then this is what, mana value three or less? So ley line binding. Draw three cards. Get rid of the Sarah Paragon. And uh, all right, opponent, your go. <laughs> your go, friend, about it. More Sarah Paragon, sure. Well, let's keep vaulting. There's an Elish Norn, that's good. Discard the tap land. Untap. Play the land. Play an Elish Norn. Okay, there's a Tyrant. That's, ooh, there's all the Tyrants. That's very good. Very, very good. We might be able to just set up for the combo kill. Pass the turn. Discard a Tyrant to hand size. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Pona gets and hits us. Sure. We'll take it. Down to 11. Things are about to get bad for our opponent, though. Aaron Giada. Yep. Well, that's Collector's Vault. Discard the Tyrant. Cycle the Proving Grounds. Up a Beanstalk number four. Well, okay, Virtue of Persistence, get rid of the Aaron Giada. If our opponent taps down, all right, well, I guess we have to do the thing. Let's loot into a land. Well, we'll discard the land. Up a Beanstalk. We're basically trying to hit one more, one more dragon so we just win. Uh, play the land. Oh, we're so close. Go to combat, attack. Oh, wait, wait, oh, we can do it. Okay, we're good, we're good, we're good. I was missing that we had, we had that Charming Scoundrel. I think this is actually gonna be lethal. So draw a bunch of cards. One, two, three, four, five. Get back everything. Tyrant your face, Tyrant your face. So Tyrant steals 16. The Wicked Rolls will deal, <laughs> will deal one, and then Twin Blade Sniper, deals four so i think we get 21 all together <laughs> that's the plan that's the plan and about it done 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 and that's the that's the plan that is how the deck works that went much better than game one i will say so our opponent is playing a bunch of counters which i guess is a concern i mean when you have triple up a beanstalk Nothing else you do really matters. Do we just run it back? Probably. Let's go down one more briefcase for one negate. Run it like that. Having a counter to counter an opponent's counter seems worth it. Like we saw there, like Lich Knight's Conquest, such an absurd plan for closing out the game. But it is kind of soft to counters. Like if our opponent can just counter it, none of none of the cool stuff happens. Let's see if we can answer Giada. I think that is the challenge of this deck. Can we kill Giada? All right, we're gonna keep this. So we can't immediately kill Giada, but we do have a Sunfall and hopefully a Collector's Vault to ramp into it. Our opponent, again, mulliganing aggressively. Well, Jetmere's Gardens, go. We do really need the Treasure Vault to resolve. Invasion of Gabacon. Okay. Takes a Collector's Vault. Well, that's unfortunate. Land of War Waste, go. There's the Giada. Yep. Passes. Well, let's Courier's Briefcase. Play the land, pass the turn. So they shouldn't be able to flip the Gabacon this turn. And now we do have access to Sunfall. Kinda need our opponent to tap down though. If they just counter it, that's pretty bad. Pound it, gonna hit the Gabacon. Yup. Oh, opponent passes. I guess we just play Collector's Vault. How many counters do you have? All right, spends in a gate. So the thing is, our opponent can flip the Gabacon. Gabacon does not save from Sunfall, though. Bonnet gets in, it's it. It does not save from Sunfall. It saves from other stuff, but not Sunfall. Counter on Giada. Oh, we can't set this to draw cards, unfortunately. Let's just play the land. And yeah, let's Tyrant. Tyrant of Carriages. Opponent's down to two cards in hand. We are going to go after the Giada. All right. Well, we got through. We got through the Gabacod, and we have a four-five flyer. 
All right, opponent kills the tyrant. Down to two cards, though. Down to two cards in hand. And we still have the Sunfall and a Lich Knight's Conquest. Yup. Down to 17. Inspiring Overseer as a redraw. Passes. Well, I mean, I think the time is... The time has come to Sunfall. Sweep the board. All right, opponent's gonna Virtue of Loyalty. Virtue is a little scary, like that could start drawing the, growing this token. Well, let's up a beanstalk. Draw a card. Lockwain scorn the token. All right, so opponent's gonna counter it. Yep, yep, yep. That is fine. I think we need to hold on to this Besaju. Besajuing this uh, Virtue does actually seem relevant. All right, another Virtue. Well, we know what our opponent's doing. Uh, opponent land. Virtue of Loyalty. No. All right, well, in that case, Besaju the Virtue of Loyalty. I mean, I, get, I guess we can just reanimate the Tyrant. Not the most explosive reanimate of all time, but it's something. It kills the token. Yeah, I mean, I guess we just, like, fire this up. Lich Knight's Conquest. Draw a card. Sack the artifact. Get the tyrant. Kill the token. Play the land. Can you beat a dragon angel, dot deck? All right, virtual loyalty, sure. Virtue with no creature is not as scary. All right, collector's vault. Loot with collector's vault. Discard a forest. Pump. Pump. Hit ya for six. Run out the bivouac past the turn. I mean, we're presenting lethal if our opponent doesn't have a flying block and opponent scoops it up and we're kind of just crushing people with this deck. This deck might actually be kind of good. <laughs> Did we break it with five color Lich Knight's Conquest Beanstalk Reanimator? Maybe, we actually might have. <laughs> yes, yeah, sweet, sweet. So what did we learn this week about our five color up of Beanstalk, Lich Knight's Conquest, Elish Norn Reanimator combo deck? And overall the deck kinda crushed it. We went five and one overall with the deck for a 83% win percentage, uh, which obviously small sample size, probably not gonna win 83% of the time forever, but still the deck felt really good. And one of the most impressive parts of the deck is it just goes over the top of essentially everything. We're playing against the mid range sloggy decks. We're playing against the five color Atroxa decks. And we just like had more late game staying power than any of them because we get all the card advantage from like up a beanstalk, we get the good removal, we have endless ways to loot through a deck and find our pieces. And then the Lich Knight's Conquest combo kill was actually really, really strong. It's such a good late game plan where we can like cast our Tyrants and our Elish Norns, eventually they're gonna die. And then we just reanimate them all and our opponent dies on the spot. So I was actually very, very impressed with how the deck played. It played way stronger than I thought it would. So if you're looking for something spicy that's kind of comboy and graveyardy, but also just draws an absurd amount of cards, this seems like a pretty good option for standard. And I gotta say, up a beanstalk, the card's kind of the truth. I was a little skeptical during spoiler season, but we saw some games with this deck where we can get down like two or three up a beanstalks, and it felt like we just couldn't lose. When we're casting a Elish Norn or a Leyline Binding or a Tyrant of Care Ridges and drawing like two or three cards, it becomes very, very difficult for the opponent to stay in the game. So that card is way better than I thought. And the synergies really all came together. Like with Collector's Vault and Courier's Briefcase and Charming Scoundrel, we usually had the fuel we needed for Lich Knight's Conquest and we just win the game out of the blue. And Lich Norn's actually really good against some decks right now. Like if it sticks, it kind of shuts down the Atroxa decks and the Ramp decks. So all around, I absolutely love this deck. It's spicy, it's different, it's fun. It draws a ton of cards, wins in a super cool way. So anyway, that is five color up a beanstalk. Lich Norn, Lich Knight's Conquest Reanimator combo. That's been our deck for today. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will talk to you soon. Looking for even more magic? Well, check out the video where we showed arena players that there are repercussions for playing creatures, or maybe the one where we talked about the 12 different types of proxiers.